Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, our Let's Play series against Hartwig. This is turn number five or six, I can't remember exactly uh, that Hartwig has been in charge. It is April 30th of 1942, so we are almost to May. We are getting into those decisive months of World War II where the Allies finally have enough strength to counter the Japanese uh, but not yet enough strength to have an overwhelming advantage. Uh, we are getting close to our initial uh, counter. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, one second here. looks like the Japanese have finally brought uh, presumably a Death Star of battleships. They've been bombarding with cruisers at Batavia previously, but now we've got battleships bombarding. Oh, we've got the H Huga? Huga? Uh, bombarding the Isa, uh, so two battleships and some cruisers bombarding here, uh, 20 combatant squads disabled, so it's the first time they've brought in heavy guns, and uh, I assume we'll see more of that at Batavia, but we are in the process of launching the first Allied counteroffensive against the Japanese. Starting at midway here, we bombarded last turn, and we had a couple of uh, ships that still had a reasonable amount of ammo, uh, so we sent them back into Bombard again. We also took Curry Island, which was unoccupied and is at a dot base, and we're going to use that to resupply our bombardment task forces with AKEs. And so we can kind of keep a shuttle bombardment situation going uh, against the Japanese on Midway here. You can see it doesn't seem like the Japanese have a ton of strength on Midway. We bombarded again and only did 36 casualties here worth of damage. Despite three battleships pounding the beach... Uh, seven runway hits, three airbase hits, one airbase supply, two port hits, two port supply. Um, and we also had a Kingfisher acting as a spotter, uh, but minimal impact on the defenders there because I don't think there's a lot of them. We're also bombarding Savi again here. So you can see this is the other place we are launching our counterattack. Midway and Savi are the two places that we can most easily and safely strike again or strike uh, the Louisville is uh, bombarding. Actually, this is a task force of heavy cruisers that are bombarding at Savi as well. Some light cruisers and destroyers. 73 casualties inflicted here. One combatant squad, four disabled. Uh, one destroyed, four disabled. Um, and so a pretty good number of hits there again. Uh, I think it's just a single naval guard unit defending here. We're also going to have a full marine regiment land at Savi. So I think we're going to be okay there. Meanwhile, the British battleship, the War Spite, is closing in here for a second bombardment task force that's hitting midway. 48 more casualties, but you can see all of the casualties thus far, with the exception of some of the guns, have all been non-combatant forces here. Three non-combatant squads destroyed, one disabled. Um, interesting left, doesn't look like any of these battleships had anyone spotting for them. Uh, but uh, another successful bombardment there, and then our second cruiser task force hitting Savi as well. Okay, so 51 more casualties on Savi, three more squads disabled, um, five more guns destroyed, and uh, the Naval Guard unit presumably is getting a little bit shell-shocked there. So I think uh, we're doing our job in softening these two bases up as we get our troops into position. Savi is more close to us actually landing troops there. Uh, the Marine Regiment, I believe, is fully loaded up and could land tomorrow if we want. Or we could continue softening them up for a few more turns. We've also been hitting them with some medium bombers out of Pago Pago. But really, the Savi strike is mostly looking at... Hit but no explosion? Ugh. All right. Um, but the Savi really forces looking at sort of ironing out our slock sort of along the Fiji line um, to the east of New Caledonia. The midway strike is more about just sort of, I guess, opportunistic uh, counterattack. The Japanese are a little bit extended there. Midway could act as a nice uh, sort of stopping over point for our submarines in Japan. Okay. Meanwhile, we've got uh, some Dauntlesses coming in here from Pago Pago, as well as our Havocs uh, coming in as well. So we've moved some of our dive bombers, which had been based at uh, at uh, Savi. None of these are carrier dive bombers, I don't believe. Um, I'd have to go back and double check, but I didn't. I don't. I don't remember moving any carrier aircraft this way. So these are all sort of marine 
or army um, aircraft here and 33 more casualties inflicted with these guys. One more gun destroyed. We've got a second wave here of Dauntless's SPD-1 Dauntless's with their fancy yellow wings coming in here. Bombing, but not really doing any damage on that strike. I thought we had P-40s that we did have P-40s last turn. I can't remember if I told them to stand down this turn or not. Meanwhile, a raid with B-17s, Havocs, and Marauders. Also coming into Savi, 15 more casualties. I think these guys are probably well and truly suppressed at this point. So I'm thinking they're the, they're the Warhawks. I'm thinking maybe we just let loose and decide to, to land there. One of those was damaged, seven more casualties inflicted here. My carriers are in the Indian Ocean, Flying Scotsman. We'll take a look at those in a bit. Japanese sweep over Batavia here with some zeros. We only have a handful of fighters left, so we engaged, but uh, looks like we lost one more Warhawk. And I think that does it for the AM phase. So we'll move into the PM phase. Some Japanese Sonyas hitting Batan. More Sonyas, these guys hitting Clark Field. Some Sally's hitting Mole Mine. Second turn in a row they've hit there. I don't have any uh, fighters deployed forward yet at Mole Mine. We did take it back from the Japanese. Hey, Pep. Good evening to you as well. And uh, some ASW work going here against Silversides. No attack there. It's a quiet turn on the submarine front. You guys remember last turn, Groper or whatever it was, fired off its in entire complement of torpedoes and got one hit, but no explosion. All right, so this core here was overrun southeast of Yunnan. It looks like the Japanese moved three armored units here to attack them. Uh, they finished off the handful of troops that were left, three tank regiments. Meanwhile, bombardment at Batavia. So that'll complement the naval bombardment that occurred this turn. So you can see the bombardments are now definitely favoring them. Also bombardment at Clark Field with the two Japanese divisions there. They don't seem to be doing much. He's probably continuing it if only just because uh, it burns through supply on our end. Chungking expands airfield to size 6. That'll be nice. And I think that's it for the turn. So we'll let these things calculate through, and then we'll load up the, uh, the turn here and take a, lo a closer look at some of this stuff. Okay, some submarines arriving, some cargo ships, some VMFs. I'd hit X to uh, speed through it, but that would actually cause the game to crash. Okay, so it is now the turn of May 1st, or orders from May 1st. You can see our ships that were bombarding Midway have pulled back to Curry Island. Battleships here, I'm assuming, yeah, they use most of their op points to reload here, but uh, as, a, as a refresher, we have a replenishment task force, and I thought we had a cargo. Is it just these guys? No, those are, that's oil. Fast transport, surface combat, battleship. They're full up on ammo, but I don't see where the ships are that replenish them with ammo. Oh, AKEs, they're in port. Okay. Um, so we disband the task force. I always forget about that. But you can see we have the AKEs here that uh, replenish these guys with uh, with ammo. Uh, the Windrush, the Morma, Scar, and the San Lucas. Looks like they're still pretty solid in terms of cargo capacity. They're using 2,800 out of a potential 42. 
So you can see 4,200 using 2,900, 4,200 using 2,800, 2,300 using 2,300. Well, that's the AV. Um, but definitely enough for more than one reload. Um, those battleships here, I believe all are completely replenished now. So that'll be nice. Now we can go ahead and go have those guys strike again. So we're going to have them hit midway. I don't think they will get there this turn. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to have these guys sit here, retirement allowed, but no disband. So we're going to have these four battleships sit here and not move this turn. Um, and then we're going to, well, actually, none of them are going to get there, are they? Because their ops are, are too, they've used up too many of their op points. A thousand is, is full usage. You can see no movement. Possibly, maybe one of the other task forces, the task force could arrive in the PM phase, but I don't think so. So in any event, what we're going to start doing is we're going to start shuttling these two battleship task forces into midway um, to ensure that every single turn, and it may not happen this turn, but so that every single turn we get a bombardment of a fully armed and stacked uh, battleship task force so that we are able to essentially overwhelm them over time and, and grind them into dust. We have additional reserves coming up. Uh, or reinforcements coming up. We've got 1,400 men on this task force, which are heading toward Curry. This is part of the 109th Base Force. We also have another 890 troops in the 2nd 298th Infantry Battalion. Uh, we have another task force down here, about a day behind of the 1st 298th. And then we have on Korea Island itself, we have the 3 298th. So these are all elements. These are all infantry battalions that are part of the 298th Infantry Regiment. Um, but you can see here first, second, third. So if we are able to get, oh crap, a small number of them are left behind at Louis. So we don't have the ability to merge them into one unit. The heavy equipment was left behind. It would have been nice to be able to merge them all into a single unit so that we could land as a full regiment. But because we had to leave some troops behind, um, we can't really do that. Troop load cost 24. Be nice if I could just disable or disband them. But yeah, so anyway, we'll have almost a full regiment ready to hit midway. It's just a question of how much we want to soften them up with uh, with our battleships. We don't want to keep the battleships at sea too long because that's going to attract enemy submarines. That's going to attract enemy carriers, you know, whatever. So we probably don't want to do it for too, too long, but certainly for a few days. Uh, it's probably safe to continue pounding midway. Meanwhile, further to the south at Savi, we can see here that the enemy has about 2,400 troops on the island based on our intel. Our um, cruisers continue to bombard these guys. They've replenished their ammo because we have AKEs in the port here as well. Uh, and we're going to kind of keep bombing uh, Savi or bombarding Savi as, as best we can. We have two surface task forces. Actually, these did they reload? They did. These destroyers are a bit low on fuel, but they haven't used their ops points. These other guys are also doing okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the cruisers from the other task force. Or we could just wait and shuttle bomb with what we've got. I don't know that the destroyers will make it in there or not. They may cause the whole task force to stop to refuel. But we'll see. Uh, does my vintage battle line have an AA upgrade yet? I don't think we've upgraded them. Maybe? They've been in port most of the game, so it's possible. But I don't think we have. These guys don't get an upgrade till June. Although they do have air search radar and 20mm or lacons as well as 40s. So it looks like the New Mexico class is already upgraded. The yeah, the new the New Mexico class ships, as far as I can tell, these guys have all done an initial upgrade. The War Spite as well. So I think they're on upgrade two. I don't think that's the pre World War World War Two air kit. Um, right, those guys, what about the other task force? Colorado is a member of the Colorado class. 
She also has already upgraded. You can see air search. Although the 5, 0.5 inch Brownings aren't great, they do have Orlicons. I'm not a big fan of the 1.1 inch. What are those, the telephone poles or whatever? But the 20 millimeters are good for close in. And they've got more upgrades coming in October. Goner, thanks for the follow. Uh, meanwhile, we looked at Savi. How's the regiment doing? Are they loaded up yet? I'm kind of thinking about we uh, about landing those Marines. So, unit org. Everybody's on the transports. Everybody's set to combat load. I say we send them. Let's go retake Savi. Actually, because I'm going to do that, the amphibious, let's just in case, let's transfer some ships to, uh, to the amphib task force here. Give them a little bit of extra support. At least a destroyer. Um, they're docked, so they can't actually. So let's undock because they can't transfer ships when they're docked because the docks are full. Um, all right, we'll also take the light cruiser Enterprise and the destroyer Le Triumph. So it'll probably reload mid 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 voyage there. But we're going to send these guys to Savi. We'll switch them to unload cargo. And I think we'll get there. Meanwhile, these cruisers need to change their mission to bombard. And transfer ships from task force. Let's pull these heavies. I'm going to actually leave one of the heavy cruisers for the uh, amphibious task force just in case. Not going to pull the destroyers that need fuel. I want to make sure the uh, cruisers get there first. Okay, 56. We'll have the destroyers with no fuel go with the uh, landing force. So we'll have one heavy, one light, four destroyers going in with the landing force. And then the bombardment force will precede them. We'll keep the air bombardment going on here. You can see the air, air units that we've assigned to these, uh, these attacks. These marine squadrons, dive bomber squadrons, we're going to keep hitting Savi with everything we've got and uh, keep their heads down. Midway will be a little bit, but Savi should fall this turn, and then that'll solidify our position in and around uh, Fiji, making sure that the enemy doesn't have any easy recon uh, into our position. I'd really like to retake Canton as well eventually. Okay, so there's that. Uh, if we take a look at our own carriers, they're sitting in the Indian Ocean. They're actually sitting in Bombay. So you can see here we've done some resizing of our air wings here. Um, not on the uh, Saratoga. Yorktown is good. You can see here we've up upsized the uh, British fighters. A complement 30 Martlet 2s, which are F4F Wildcats in the Royal Navy. That's a huge, huge increase. That's like double the original complement of fighter aircraft. Um, in that task force. And then we've also got the other task force, not this one. We've got the Lexington Enterprise Formidable. You can see here we've got uh, some Alba cores on the Lexington. And uh, 28 Sea Hurricanes on the Formidable. So pretty kick-ass squadron there. So yeah, carriers are sitting at Bombay. Uh, we haven't seen any sort of indication that the Japanese are going to move shipping up into the Bay of Bengal. I was a little bit worried about that with their previous opponent, but this opponent doesn't seem as interested in doing that they have pushed 47 fighters forward to chiang mai um which is interesting they have been bombing mole mine for a couple of turns here but they don't have enough aircraft to keep the airfield even remotely bombed out you can see zero damage so the, the engineers are repairing everything quickly it does use some supply up but supply isn't too major of a concern at the moment in burma Meanwhile, we did have this enemy armored thrust near Yan'an. You can see they are continuing to push northwest, so they may be trying to flank Cyan. Um, certainly seems likely uh, with those uh, 
tanks. We could potentially hit them with some airstrikes to try and slow them down. Uh, we have about 700 assault value in Cyan itself. Some units we've split up to try and recover some of their um, strength. We have about 2,400 south of Cyan, and then to the east we've got even more than that. So you can see this one unit here, uh, 94 on these guys. Next unit is a headquarters unit. Next unit down the road is a couple of additional group army headquarters units. And then we've got some uh, some combat units here, the 19th Corps. Not a lot really standing in the way of those three regiments. We have pulled a fair number of troops back into the mountains uh, to make sure that they're not able to easily flank us there. No real sign of what's going on in southern or central China at the moment. Looks like those areas are secure. Uh, meanwhile, the supply situation in uh, Clark Field grows worse. These guys still have a little bit of supply, but they are going to rapidly get weaker and weaker as they their supply dries up. But Clark Field's good defensive terrain, and that's why we've pushed them forward there, because it's actually better than the forts at Batan, at least at level four forts. No supply at Batan either. It's getting pounded by air, but not enough to do any damage, really. Batavia, meanwhile, we have lost not a ton of AV, maybe like 10 or 20, maybe 60. But it was like 11.50, somewhere less than that. Um, so these uh, the naval bombardment there last turn didn't really do a ton of damage. You can see most of these units are still not suppressed at all. Those numbers in the parentheses are very low or non-existent. So despite the battleship bombardment there, not a lot of damage done to Batavia. Uh, they did... Well, they didn't even do a lot of damage to the supply there. We still have 41,000 supply. We were at 42 last turn, so... Um, not a terribly effective bombardment. Does slow down the building of fortifications, I believe. But it will consume quite a bit of supply for the Japanese, so uh, that was a good trade that turn. I didn't realize we got into level 3 forts on Koskos. That's nice. Being in an atoll on all that. Um, meanwhile, I, I'm not quite sure why... But it doesn't look like Hornet has revealed her presence here. I guess she was sailing in thunderstorms, so maybe that's why she hasn't bombed Midway yet. But kind of strange there. Let's switch this off. Retirement allowed. These guys should be ordered to bomb Midway. They are. Ground attack. So let's go ahead and move the uh, Hornet a little bit closer to Midway. I think our, our battleships probably have already closed the airfield at this point. So let's move uh, Yorktown up here to hit midway from the air. Maybe we can do a little bit more damage there before those those troops show up. Um, in terms of intelligence, aircraft losses last turn, three allied, one Japanese. No multiples of anything. One P-40 air to air. I'm assuming that was lost in the battle over Batavia. So you can see here, we've got two ready P-40s, no ready Hurricanes. So, not great. Um, take a look at top pilots. We didn't lose anyone last turn, so yay for us. I don't think we shot anyone down either. Uh, ship sunk last turn. I don't think anything sank. Ship availability. Not a lot of interesting stuff coming. We've got the one CLA before too long. Uh, air combat, we've got the illustrious coming in with 24 martlets and 12 swordfishes. So another carrier is entering the Indian Ocean soon. But we also have the repaired and ready battle cruiser Repulse, the fast battle cruiser here. She's recovered from her damage of the Battle of Mersing. Ready to kick ass, take names. Um, meanwhile, under repair, we've got the battleship Prince of Wales. Uh, still undergoing repair for another... What are we at? I need, I need to look. Seven days for pure side, but that'll just get us the system damage, I think, down to zero. The major repairs have already been done. Everything that can be done shy of shipyard... And the goal here is now that we've got the max speed up to 11 with a little bit lower flood damage, I'm hoping once the system damage is down that we can get the cruise speed up one more hex and get her back to England. 
And um, that's uh, that's kind of almost about it. Um, not sure. Oh, one other thing. I did want to show you guys. I don't know if you remember last turn or not. We had the, I think it was the Groper. How do you like the name of this task force? <laughs> Just task force name. Sack Skipper Incompetent. SS Groper is returning to, returning to port having done no damage to the enemy despite wasting a valuable cargo of torpedoes and three-inch gun ordnance. The skipper has been preemptory, preemptily, preemptory? He's received preemptory orders, I think. I don't know. I don't know how you say that. To return to Pearl Harbor forthwith, uh, making no diversions and to return uh, post-haste. Perhaps we could have relieved him over the radio, but um, we can't do that in the game. So you know we've we've got to we've got to do what we can. We got to get him back to port so he can reload. And while the Mark 14 might be worthless, remember he had three or he had he fired off what 30 fish or, or 24 fish or something like that, and um, only one of them was a hit, but no explosion. The rest were just flat out misses. And, and I'm sorry, but even with the Mark 14, we see plenty of other skippers regularly drill the targets and they just don't blow up. So uh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, Casey heard you are going to be riding a desk with as well as you performed. You probably belong at uh, Bureau Ordnance, uh, the Bureau of Ordnance, uh, where you can work on that fine, fine piece of equipment, the Mark 14. Um, because you're probably about as good of a sub skipper as the folks who developed the, the Mark 14. Yeah. So that was a moment that that was a thing that happened. Yeah. All at one, a transport ship, right? Coffee. <laughs> yeah. Cannon, but here's the problem. He fired 30 torpedoes at a single merchantman. He scored one hit. That didn't blow up, so yes, you've got the Mark 14 air there, but the fact that he missed every other one, not not a good result. Has to come back anyway to get more torpedoes. Damn right, Sultan. Damn right. You know, we could have. If this was the game U-Boat, then you could kill your own crew member at sea, right? That's like the main thing I remember from the uh, from the tutorial of that game. It was like, this person has betrayed you or something. So you basically have someone walk up to him and shoot them, just summarily execute them. Um, Cause that happens. That in the tutorial where you have like, you've got the divers that like go down to the, to, to the wreckage or whatever. And then you have to dive and lead that, leave them to die or whatever. Uh. <laughs> anyway. That's the rear, the real Admiral Kenneth Hurd. Was he a real? Did he, did he become an admiral? No, he's not a good skipper. Like if we look at his stats, they're not even good. Groper, Kenneth Hurd, thirty-five administration skill. So like I don't know what he's going to be an admiral of. Twenty-four land, so sucks at land combat. Thirty-seven air, thirty-four aggression. So he's basically he can't do paperwork. He's basically a coward. He he has no air or land skill. 66 naval skills, pretty good. But like the admin skill being so low. He commanded transports in Korea. Really? Okay. Well, you know, he does have a good naval ranking. If someone can just point a gun at him and tell him to go do naval things, maybe he can be decent. His leadership and inspiration aren't good, but they're not terrible. So his last assignment was naval intelligence, but is so well, maybe these rankings in the game just don't do him justice because his administration skills shit. I guess he could get better with age. Anyway, he's not going to get the chance. He's going to be relieved. He's going to be watching the war from the, the comfort of his couch. But yeah, so that's pretty much, um, it's pretty much our turn. Um, we adjusted some bombardment stuff. I think next turn we'll get our landing at Savi, so we'll get to see our first amphibious assault. If not next turn, the turn after. 
but uh, I well, we've already actually technically retaken Baker Island, but that was like a fly by the seat of your pants. Load up a, a low lone raider regiment or, or actually a raider battalion on fast transports and drop them with no bombardment, no preparation, and just pray the enemy has no troops there, which they basically didn't. Um, so that doesn't really count in my eyes. And then the same for Curry, where we landed, but there were no enemy no enemy troops there. So this could be considered our first counterattack at the enemy. But with that being said, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed our Return to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, our play-by-email series. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.